ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Mark Blunden and this is The Leader. Wearing his trademark olive green military fatigues, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has touched down in the UK to negotiate a major weapons deal. From Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's Chequers retreat, it's been promised that hundreds of long-range attack drones will be given to help counter Russia's ongoing invasion. This room that we're standing in, Winston Churchill made many of his famous speeches in World War II from this room. And in the same way today, your leadership, your country's bravery and fortitude are an inspiration to us all. I look forward to us discussing what more we can do to support you and your country. We'll discuss very important issues, urgent uh, support for Ukraine and security. For, I think not only for Ukraine, it's important for all the Europe. So thank you. Thank you that you hosted me and invited me. Britain last year provided over £2 billion worth of military support to Ukraine. It's more than any other country apart from America and has also trained 15,000 Ukrainian troops here. But the agreement to send long-range Storm Shadow precision missiles sparked the Kremlin to threaten military retaliation. Now the government's confirmed provision of hundreds of air defence missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles with a range of nearly 125 miles. Plus there's a fighter jet pilot training agreement, but Zelensky wants the jets themselves. We're joined from the capital, Kiev, by Denis Ganja, a member of the President's Youth Affairs Council. So, Dennis, what's the context of the UK visit? As you have followed the news during the recent week, President Zelensky has visited different countries, including uh, Germany, including uh, uh, France, and now he's in the United Kingdom. And I think that this is, you know, this is the thing which we are using because the counteroffensive is coming for sure. President Zelensky has stated this. And the help which all the partners, including the United Kingdom, is providing us is vital to be ready for the counteroffensive. And I think that probably, most probably, of course, we don't know what happens behind, behind the closed doors, but uh, they're discussing some very important things prior to the big events to come. What are the key weapons we're talking about here? Last week, uh, Great Britain has announced that uh, you have given us a very good missile storm shadows. And you can already see them working because there are lots of uh, Russian military targets being hit, especially in Luhansk region. And uh, Ukraine has been stating this for a very long time, that we need another game changer. If you follow the events of the last summer, when the United States provided us with HIMARS missile systems, that has changed the game a lot. Because Russians, uh, now after that, they... Uh, they had the need to change their logistics so that the HIMARS rockets can't reach them. And right now, as you're providing us with this Storm Shadow rockets, with the new drones, it will make a new change of the logistics, which means that Russians will actually need to bring their military operation centers inside Russia, which will make it easier for Ukrainian army to liberate these territories. How do you think the recent Pentagon leaks have impacted strategy? For a year of the full-scale war with Russia, there was no big leakage of anything from inside the Ukraine. It was only when Russia occupied some city, they got some data from it, like when they have taken some intelligence unit building in Harrison, for instance. And of course, having the big package of documents, we don't even know the actual size. I've heard, first of all, it was something of 40 documents. Now it's more than 300 documents. And of course, any plans from that being released is not a good news for the country which is in the state of war. I wrote today that uh, Prigozhin, who is the head of Wagner, from these documents this information has come, uh, that uh, he was actually contacting Ukraine's army to negotiate something. And that's interesting. And that's changing the plans for everyone. And uh, there were some interesting information about the possible ways where the Ukraine's counteroffensive can start. And maybe, I'm just assuming maybe, because of that, right now, other plans, military plans are changing. So you're 23 and you're on the mobilization list. Do you think you'll get called up? What we're tending to say here in Ukraine, one day or another, all of us will be in the trenches. It's just because we don't feel that even if Ukraine finishes and wins this war, 
that this will be the last war with Russia. And uh, of course, that's because of that we are preparing actually. And uh, together with France, we have set up some military training where we work with Kalashnikovs, where we do some small military tactics, how to do the first aid in the trenches when someone is wounded. So we are preparing. We are prepared and we know that war will be here with us. The army needs new people. Because, of course, Ukraine has some losses and most probably they're not uh, small. You know, this is just your duty. You need to protect your country one day. But as of now, we are mostly focused on other issues. But when needed, we are ready. So how does that work? The one problem which Ukraine had even prior to the full-scale invasion that we don't have this so-called professional army because we had this mobilization and that uh, any person from 21 to 27 should have served in the army. So it's not like contract army when the person comes and signs a contract. And uh, on the February 24th, when the martial law was imposed, the full mobilization was announced. And this means that army can actually, if there is the need of the person of your profile to invite you to join the army, to recruit you. Of course, we have lots of volunteers and because of that, the army was not, it was not like in Russia, you know, that people were being caught on the streets. But at the same time, uh, the Ukrainian army is capable of inviting you to the recruiting center and to see if your skills are needed inside the army. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, what it's like sleeping under the threat of Russian rocket attacks. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. Now we ask Denis Ganja in Kiev what it's like to live and try to sleep in an apartment block under the threat of Russian rocket and drone attacks. During the last three weeks, the Russians have chosen yet another terrorist tactic to bomb the city at night, mostly at 3 or 4 a.m. And we had this airstrike alarms. Uh, they have sent 35 drones in one night, 21 rockets another night. For me personally, is that I have lost some perception of reality because when you wake up in the morning and there was an attack and such mornings repeat for 10 days in a row, you just lost the perception of reality and you come to your office and you ask, okay, was there something today? And then, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? And because of that, you know, you're, you don't perceive what was an actual nightmare, let's call it like this, and what was when you're awakened. Because they do this at 4 a.m., which is the time for the, the most deep sleep. And because of that, sometimes you're just waking up, you don't feel what is reality, what, what is real, what is fake. How do you rate the president's personal chemistry with Rishi Sunak compared to his relationship with Boris Johnson? If we talk about the relations they have, of course, we don't know what is happening behind the closed doors, but from so far, what we have seen, President Zelensky is having this tendency to stop really good relations with any partner who is right now ruling the partner country. And uh, of course, Boris Johnson is a superstar here in Ukraine because he was one of the first to come actually to Ukraine uh, with no fear to visit and to walk in the Kiev, which was under, under shelling. But I don't see any difference because I do feel that it's about your feeling of the need of supporting Ukraine. And no matter who rules the UK, they still will be really good friends with President Zelensky because we have one aim, to stop Russia where it is and to win this war together. Finally, in your view, is there any hope for negotiation at all to bring about some kind of resolution? You know, I think we have stated this for so many times. We will only negotiate something when there is not there, there is no Russian soldiers on our territories. And by this, we mean Crimea, we mean Luhansk, Donetsk, Kharkiv, and Zaporizhia regions, all of them. And only on this, we will start talking on peace and other things. And I think that the armed forces of Ukraine, with the support from the international community, are capable to make sure that there are no Russian soldiers on Ukrainian land.
There's more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. We're back on Tuesday at 4pm. <laughs>